Well, now that we've looked at how Mailflow works within the organization, it's time to look at how to establish inbound and outbound email with the internet. So in this module, we're going to look at accepted domains, email address policies, MX records, and send connectors. Accepted domains are the SMTP namespaces that an exchange organization is able to send and receive email for. One thing to keep in mind is that a domain must be added as an accepted domain before it can be used in email addresses that are assigned to recipients. There are three types of accepted domains in an exchange organization. Authoritative domains are those that the exchange organization is solely responsible for. Exchange will only deliver emails to local recipients for authoritative domains. Internal relay domains are those that the exchange organization shares responsibility for. Some recipients for the domain will be located on an external mail system, which could be another exchange organization or a third party mail system. An exchange will first look for a local recipient and if none are found, it will relay the mail off to another mail system. There's a second piece to this, which is a send connector to handle the routing of the email messages to the other mail system. And we'll look at an example of that later in this course when we examine shared namespace scenarios. The other type is external relay domains. These are domains for which Exchange has no local recipients, but can relay the messages to another mail system to handle. When you configure an accepted domain, it's possible to configure just the domain name itself, or you can use a wildcard. So if you add globemantics.biz to the exchange organization as an accepted domain, then only email addresses at globemantics.biz can be assigned to recipients. For example, adam.wally at globemantics.biz. But if you add an accepted domain using a wildcard, then email addresses at globemantics.biz and any subdomain can also be assigned to recipients. For example, adam.wally at sales.globomantics.biz. The only catch is if you're using a wildcard, you can't use the subdomains in email address policies. You can only manually assign the email addresses. So if you're planning to use email address policies, you should explicitly enter the subdomain names as accepted domains. So let's go into the Globomantics environment and take a look at managing accepted domains. Well, here we are logged into the Exchange Admin Center, and as you can see, there is already one accepted domain for this organization, which is Globomantics.biz, and it is an authoritative domain. Globomantics has a new brand that is spinning up called Wired Brain Coffee. And so Dave, our systems engineer, would need to add another accepted domain to the organization. The name that is assigned to the accepted domain is kind of irrelevant, and most people just match the name up with the actual domain name itself. You can see the three options to choose from, authoritative, internal relay, and external relay. So for now, this will be an authoritative domain, so we just save that change. And it's really as simple as that because we're just adding the domain to an internal exchange organization. There's no DNS records or other validation steps that we need to go through to prove that we own that domain. Now, even though you could technically add any domain you like as an accepted domain in this exchange organization, you do need to be careful. If we were, for example, to add gmail.com as an accepted domain and mark it as an authoritative domain, nobody in this exchange organization would be able to email any gmail.com email addresses, because as far as exchange is concerned, any gmail.com recipients are internal to the organization. It won't try to route them externally to the actual Gmail email servers. So do be careful with the domains that you add here and only add domains that you actually own. Now let's take a look at email address policies. Email address policies are responsible for automatically generating email addresses for recipients in the organization. There is one default email address policy in the organization that gets created for you by Exchange Setup. And by default, it will just assign the default accepted domain to all recipients. And that accepted domain will be whatever the Active Directory forest name is. 
For Globomantics, the forest name is Globomantics.biz, which is why Globomantics.biz was already in there as an accepted domain, and why the email address policy will be assigning Globomantics.biz email addresses. Recipients can be assigned email addresses via the email address policy, or you can exclude them from the email address policy, and you can assign email addresses manually if you need to. When you're applying email address policies, you use queries to match the recipients to the policy. As an example of a query, you might say that all recipients who have the company field of Wide Brain Coffee should receive a widebraincoffee.biz email address. If there are multiple matches, so in other words, if there are two email address policies whose queries match a recipient, the policy with the highest priority will win in that situation. Email address policies can only assign email addresses for accepted domains. You can't use an email address policy to assign email addresses for domains that you haven't already configured as either an authoritative or an internal relay accepted domain. But you can use email address policies to assign multiple email addresses in a single policy. So if people need several different email address formats, you can assign them all in the same single policy, but only one of those email addresses will be marked as the primary email address. And the primary email address for a recipient, such as a mailbox user, is the email address that their emails will appear to be from when they send to other people. The final point is that email address policies are additive. They only add email addresses to recipients. They never remove email addresses. If you have a need to remove a whole heap of email addresses from multiple recipients because they're domains that you no longer want to use, you would need to actually do that using some form of scripting or automation. Or you could just edit them one by one, which obviously will take a lot longer if you have a lot of recipients to modify. When you're configuring your email address policy, the email addresses that are assigned are based on variables. So there are variables such as given name, middle initial, surname, display name, exchange alias, and you can also use the first one or two or three letters of the surname and the first one, two, three, and so on letters of the given name as well. If the email address policy is just assigning an at globomantics.biz address, then it's going to default to using the exchange alias. If you want something different, you could say first name dot surname, so percentage G percent dot percentage S at globomantics.biz, or percentage 1G percentage S at globomantics.biz, which would give you that A Wally at globomantics.biz result. So we'll go back into the Globomantics environment and look at creating an email address policy. Well, here in Globomantics, the widebraincoffee.biz domain name has been added as an accepted domain. And now those widebraincoffee users need to be assigned email addresses in that domain. So step one, Dave, the systems engineer, would need to go ahead and create an email address policy for that domain. So we'll create this new email address policy the policy name uh, can really be anything you like, much like accepted domains, but it pays to give the email address policy a name that makes sense for the organization or for the department or for the email addresses that you'll be assigning. We choose the email address format. The first step is to choose which accepted domain will be assigned. So in this case, it's wiredbraincoffee.biz, and then choose the email address format. First name dot last name is one of the pre-canned formats there. So that's nice and easy. Alternatively, down here in the more options, we could specify an SMTP address type and then choose any of those parameters that we looked at earlier, or those variables that can be used to construct an email address. But we'll just stick with the first name dot last name pre-canned email address template. The last option there is to make this email address the reply email address or the primary email address. So again, this will be the email address that the user replies from or sends new email from, and that's what recipients will see. Email address policies have a priority or they run in sequence. Now this is the second email address policy being assigned. The default email address policy has the lowest priority. So this one is automatically assigned a priority of one. 
If you create additional email address policies, they'll be automatically assigned two and three and so on, but you can actually edit those priorities and have them process or be assessed in priority order that you prefer. For Widebrain Coffee, we want this email address policy to apply to all recipients and then just need to add a further rule so that it only applies to recipients who have a company attribute of Wired Brain Coffee. Now, one of the handy options here is to preview the recipients that that will be applied to. And at the moment in Globomantics, there are no recipients who have a company attribute of Wired Brain Coffee, so nothing is actually going to change. Go ahead and save that policy, and then we'll just apply it. And now that's ready to go. So we'll jump back to the recipients here and let's pick Alona Ma as one of the users who's going to be moving from Globomantics into the new Wide Brain Coffee brand in the organization. So let's change Alona's company attribute to Wide Brain Coffee. And we can see that straight away, because that change was made through an exchange administrative tool, the email address policies are reassessed and the new email address policy was applied to that user. Going back into Alona's mailbox properties, we can have a look at the email addresses. And as you can see, the globomantics.biz email address that was previously the primary email address has been retained. So it doesn't get removed by that email address policy. It just moves to being a secondary email address or an alias on that mailbox. Now let's say we want to manually assign a wide brain coffee email address to a user. Well, let's go into Antoine's mailbox properties and try and add in another email address. So far, so good, but where's the option to make that email address the primary email address? Well, we can't actually change the primary email address as long as a mailbox or a recipient is configured to automatically update email addresses based on email address policies. We need to clear that option first, save the change, and just, just go back into Antoine's mailbox properties. And now we get the option to make this the reply address. So as you've seen there, there's two ways to assign those wide brain coffee email addresses. You can do it with an email address policy, which is going to be more efficient or one at a time on those recipients. But in order to make that change manually, you may need to clear the option for assigning email addresses via policy. So far, we've told the Exchange organization what to do with the widebraincoffee.biz domain. So it knows that it's an accepted domain, that it's an authoritative domain for that organization. And we've assigned some email addresses via the email address policy to recipients within the domain. So now Exchange knows what to do with that domain, but the rest of the world does not. And that's where MX records come into play. MX records, well, the MX stands for Mail Exchanger. Yes, Mail Exchanger, not ME, it's actually MX. That's a record type in DNS, and it's used to define the host name that email for a domain should be sent to. You can have multiple MX records with different priorities for a domain, and that's something we're going to look at a little bit later in this course and how multiple MX records can be used. You don't actually need MX records for Exchange to understand how internal mail flow works. So Exchange is smart enough to know that it can route authoritative domains internally. It knows how to route email between servers and different recipients in the organization. It doesn't need MX records for that. MX records are really for public or internet email delivery. That said, you can actually override other people's MX records as far as your organization is concerned by defining send connectors for mail leaving your organization. And you have the choice to say whether you want to use people's MX records to deliver it or whether you want to define the host that you're going to route to. And we'll take a look at that as well shortly in this module. Here's the basic process for an MX record lookup in DNS. The server is going to look up the authoritative name servers for the domain. Let's say in this case, it's gmail.com. Query those name servers for the MX records for the domain. When the MX records are returned from that query, the server is then going to look up the host names that were returned in the MX records 
to determine the IP addresses to connect to. So here's an example for globemantics.biz. If the resolve DNS name command that was used to try and resolve the MX records for globemantics.biz, it returns a result of mail.globemantics.biz, which is the only MX record for that domain. So at that point, the server would need to do an additional DNS query to look up the IP address of mail.globemantics.biz and then make an SMTP connection to that IP address. Here's another example for gmail.com. As you can see, gmail.com has multiple MX records with different preferences and different host names involved. So again, when gmail.com MX records are returned, the server is going to pick the one that is the most preferred, look up that host name in DNS, and then connect to that IP address. Now, one thing you might also notice in this output is that the host names that are used as MX records don't necessarily need to match the domain name that you're sending to. So gmail.com as a domain name has MX records with host names that are in the google.com namespace. This is quite common. You could have completely unrelated host names for MX records for domains. That's quite typical when companies are using third-party email filtering services like Exchange Online Protection. The host names used for the MX records will usually be the domain name of the anti-spam provider, not necessarily the domain name of the organization. So let's go into the Globomantics environment again and configure MX records in DNS for the new widebraincoffee.biz domain name. So before we make any changes, let's have a look and see if there's an MX record already in place for Wirebrain Coffee. The MX toolbox rule tells us that no record exists for widebraincoffee.biz. That's fine because one hasn't been configured yet. These domains happen to be hosted in Amazon Web Services Route 53. So globomantics.biz has a zone in Route 53 called globomantics.biz and there is one MX record for globomantics.biz already. Its value points to the host name of mail.globomantics.biz. That means that a mail.globomantics.biz A record also needs to exist in the zone and it resolves to the public IP address that NATs to that exchange server in Globomantics. So for Wired Brain Coffee, we basically need to establish the same configuration. So let's create an MX record to begin with. So the MX record for wiredbraincoffee.biz, gonna set a priority of 10. You can really set any priority you like since there's only one MX record in this case, but 10 is a good starting point. Mail.wired brain coffee.biz is going to be the value. So that means that we also need to establish the A record for mail.widebrandcoffee.biz and that is going to resolve to the same public IP address as the mail.globomantics.biz. So that change has been made and DNS changes in Route 53 propagate fairly quickly. So we should actually be able to test this again in MX Toolbox and see a result pretty fast. Okay, that's already working. Widebraincoffee.biz is now returning an MX record. The host name is mail.widebraincoffee.biz and the MX Toolbox tools were able to resolve that to the correct IP address. While we're here, let's also just do the SMTP test and see what results we get. And those results are pretty good. We can see that there is a server listening on that IP address on port 25. It is in fact the San Francisco Exchange Server 1 server. So we know that the firewall is now natting those connections through to one of the exchange servers correctly. And basically now with the MX record in place, email from the internet to wiredbraincoffee.biz should be working. But before we test that, let's go ahead and complete this solution by establishing outbound mail flow for the Globomantics organization. In this video, let's look at send connectors. Send connectors are used to route email to external recipients. Every organization that wants to be able to send email to the internet needs at least one send connector configured. 
Multiple send connectors can be used for controlling email delivery to specific external domains, for securing mail flow to partner organizations, and also for fault tolerance. So in other words, you can have multiple outbound routes from your organization. Send connectors are shared for all of the domains and recipients in the organization. You don't need to establish separate send connectors for separate parts of your organization. So Globomantics and Wide Brain Coffee do not need separate send connectors. So we'll jump into the demo environment and configure a send connector for the Globomantics organization for outbound email. Okay, we're logged back into the Exchange Admin Center. In the mail flow section, there is this uh, send connectors item. And at the moment, this organization doesn't happen to have any send connectors, so they wouldn't be able to email the outside world at all. So let's go ahead and create one send connector for the organization. We'll just call it outbound internet email. The purpose is internet for sending internet mail. The simplest way to configure this is just to allow MX records to be used for routing to external domains. So the exchange servers will look up the recipient's domain in DNS, find the MX records and make that connection directly to the mail server. But in many organizations, a smart host is used for outbound routing of mail. Sometimes there's additional filtering applied to outbound mail. So you do have the option there to route mail through smart hosts as well. The address space of the send connector defines the domains that you're routing to. This is not the domain names that you're sending from. Okay, some people do get confused with this option and they think that they can actually configure separate send connectors for different internal recipients and say that one part of the organization is going to route out through that particular smart host and a separate part of the organization is going to route out through a different smart host. That's not actually the purpose of this setting and it's not possible with the native controls within Exchange. To configure a send connector to send to all domains on the internet, just use the wildcard character or an asterisk for that domain. And then finally, we just need to configure source servers for the connection. So these will be the exchange servers in the organization that are responsible for routing out through that send connector. In this example, we're gonna consider this one to be the outbound mail flow and have it all run via the San Francisco site. So I'll just put the two San Francisco mailbox servers in the source server list and then we can finish the creation of the send connector. Well, now all of that is in place, let's see if inbound and outbound mail flow are both working for this organization. To perform this test, we're logged on to a client workstation as Alona Ma and Outlook is open and working and Alona is just going to compose an email to an external email address. So hopefully that email is making its way out of the organization and we should see it pop up in the Gmail inbox shortly. And there we go, Alona's email has arrived. Let's just reply to it from the Gmail mailbox and that way we can verify that inbound mail flow to widebraincoffee.biz is also working. And there we have it, inbound mail flow is working as well. So widebraincoffee.biz is up and running Users can be assigned the email address policy once their company attribute has been changed to Wide Brain Coffee. And they can also send and receive email using those new email addresses. In this module, we've looked at how accepted domains define responsibility for domain names to the exchange organization. We've also looked at how email address policies are used to automatically assign email addresses to recipients how MX records facilitate inbound email flow to the exchange organization, and how send connectors establish outbound mail flow for the exchange organization as well. Coming up in the next module, we're going to look at the edge transport server role.